Let the church come to order. And may we stand for our praise and worship. Amen. Amen. And the scripture this evening will be coming from the book of Mark, chapter 2, starting at verse number 14. Amen. Amen. Mark, chapter 2, starting at verse number 14. And when you get there, just please acknowledge by saying amen, so I know that we're all together. Again, that's Mark, chapter 2, starting at verse number 14. Amen. Amen. All right. And the scripture reads. And as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the receipt of custom, and said unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in his house, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples. For there were many, and they followed him. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, How is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? When Jesus heard it, he said unto them, They that are whole have no need of a physician, but they that are sick. I come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Amen? Amen. 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 We have read the book of Mark, chapter 2, verses 14 through 17. May the Holy Spirit give you revelation of his word. May he bring it to your remembrance in the days to come, and may he help you apply it to your life. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us bow for prayer. Father God in heaven, we just come before you now in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. And we just come thanking you, first and foremost, Father, yeah. because you woke us up this morning, Father. You protected us through the storm last Hallelujah, night, God. Father. Thank you, Jesus. It didn't come now, hurt us, blow our roofs off. It thank didn't do God. anything to it, but thank passed you, on by people, Thank you, God. Father. We appreciate it. So we thank you, Father thank God. Thank you so much, yes, God. And Father thank God, you. we just come to lift you up this do, God. evening, do. Father. Because, because you're worthy, we, God. You, Hallelujah. You, you truly are worthy, Father. And we want to see you high and lifted up. Hallelujah. Father, there is no other God besides thee, no, Father no, God. No, 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 and we no, just no. thank you, Father God. We thank you for your righteousness, Father. We thank you, Father, for everything that you do for us, Father. Yes, God, Seen do. and unseen, we do, Father. Father. We, we just give you praise, honor, and glory, Father, because you are truly worthy. Yes, Father. God. Worthy God. And Father, we just ask right now that if you would just get forgive us of our sins, Father. Forgive us of where we fell short Please, and missed the mark, Father sir. God. Father, we just ask right now, Father, that if there's anything, Father, that we have done, Father, that we turn from it right now, yes, Father, we Jesus repent God. of it, Father. Yes, Father, 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 we just ask right now, Father God, we that you just let your spirit manifest itself here. Yes. 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 Father, we yes. ask that Show everything yourself, that we do, we do it strong. to give you honor and Show praise and glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Thank Father. Thank you, Father, for everything. Father, we just mean. ask right now, Father you God, that you God. just, 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 just cause your spirit to manifest itself in yes. here, Have Father. Your way, Lord. Have, Have your way, way Father. Have your way. Touch Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. And we ask right now, Father, for the word that you put in Bishop's mouth, Father, let it fall on good ground. Let us apply it to our lives, Father. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Father God, we just ask that everything that we do in here tonight, Father. We give you praise, honor, and glory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. And he He loves me so. He. 
Soldiers in the army of the Lord, present all. This is my weapon. I am armed and dangerous. Look out, devil, the fight is on. Amen, amen. What fight are we fighting? The, fight. the good fight of faith. faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Up in here. Up in here. You may be seated <laughs> in the presence of the Lord. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hello, family, and welcome to Bible study. Good evening, it's always, good evening, Reverend. It's always a pleasure. It's always a pleasure to be in your company. I'm so grateful for those of you who have come out to Bible study tonight and for those of you who are viewing Bible study tonight. We are still dealing with the subject of the significance of the house of God and the sanctuary. We're still dealing with it because God is not finished Amen. talking to us about it. I've come to find out, as God has been, saying, has been speaking to me, I understand why God is saying the things that he is saying. He had me to send a text out to the church saying that it was time for us not to just be relaxing and, and reconnecting with family. All those things are fine that he's allowed us to do. He said, but this is also a time, watch this, a time of consecration, though. Amen. He says it's also a time of preparation, watch this, for what's coming next. Amen. This too shall pass, but there is something that's coming next. And God wants us to prepare. God wants his people to prepare. Watch this. To What's enter next? back into his sanctuary. Amen. God wants us to prepare ourselves. And there's some, some scriptures, verses of scripture I'm going to read to you tonight. That's talking about cleanliness. It's talking about preparing yourself for the service in the house of God. Being in the presence of God. And so uh, God is saying it's time for us to prepare to enter back into the house. Into the sanctuary. We need to, we need to sanctify ourselves. We need to. Go through a time of purification. Mm -hmm. And so God is going to use some scripture to talk to us about this tonight. And so I know he had me to say to us not too long ago. I can't even remember what service we were in when he said, you know, there are people that think that there are certain things in the Bible that's not there. And we use things. We call them Bible verses, but they're not. And one of them was cleanliness is next to godliness. Huh. But God, let me tell you why cleanliness is important to God. Even though that's not a scripture, let me tell you why cleanliness is important to God. Because God wants his best from you. Amen. God wants your very, very best. So how is it that I practice spiritual cleanliness is through physical cleanliness? I have to practice, Timothy. I have to practice finding out what does it mean. Well, we're going to see in Scripture where God actually told folks to go and wash, go bathe, cut your hair, clean yourself up. Y'all even talk to me. Cut your hair, clean yourself up, brush your teeth, mm. act like you're going to the house. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. And so God <laughs> wanna make sure that when we come together, we bring our best forward to Him. Amen. So when He talks about cleanliness, we talk about cleansing yourself. He's talking about consecration and preparation. Say that. Consecration, consecration and, and preparation. preparation. We've been away from the house of God. We haven't collectively assembled ourselves together like we normally would. And God said, well, I need you. Why is this not? It's important that you hear this. Uh -huh. We're talking about the significance of the sanctuary, the importance of the sanctuary. But I have to make sure, watch this here. When I come to the sanctuary, I come to the sanctuary with clean hands, right. with pure hearts and pure motives. Because if I don't do that, what happens is when those who are not saved come around, there's a dim light. If I'm not consecrated, if I haven't spent time consecrating myself and preparing myself for service, which brings us back to the significance, watch this here, of the Sabbath, which is the seventh day. If I don't prepare myself when I come to the first day, I'm not going to come in the right way, in the right condition, position, and posture when I come before God. It's amazing that God has transitioned us into a place to where we're not just falling dead in his presence when we come any kind of way. Right. And we take it for granted because we're not falling dead when we come before God any kind of way. You may not want to. You may not want to clean yourself up to go to work, but God wants you to clean yourself up to come to the house of worship. Right. That's all right. You got to talk to me. I'll talk to myself for a minute. You, you God is. We're going to see in Scripture tonight. We read Scripture how God prepares His people. He selects people, watch this here for service, and he tells them to clean themselves up. You know why? So that they are not offensive to others. Uh -huh. And so God says, he, so he wants us to consecrate ourselves, spend this time preparing to come back to the sanctuary, gathering back together with each other. So when we do come back, watch this, God got something to work with. Amen. 
And so let's let's go to Numbers chapter 8, if you would. Numbers chapter 8 is where we're going to start tonight. Numbers chapter 8. In Numbers chapter 8, and I think I'm going to start at verse number 1. I'm going to start at verse number 1, but I'm going to make my way. I'm going to make my way to verse number 20. Uh, all beyond. It all depends on how the Lord leads. I may read the whole chapter. Amen. We may deal with this whole chapter because it's talking about the Levites and it's talking about how God had them consecrate. How he had the man of God to consecrate them. Watch this here. For the service of the church. For the service of the house of God. And he told them physically to go and clean themselves up. They had to physically go do a cleansing. Watch this. But they also had to have a spiritual cleansing too. Amen. And the reason for it is, the reason for it is, is because when I come into the house of God, I need to bring God my best. I don't just come to God any kind of way. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we've been doing that for so long, and it, it's become the norm. But here's the deal that we don't understand. When we come to God any kind of way, we miss out on God. Mm -hmm. right. You right. know, I've heard women say this, and I've also heard men say this. You know, when, when you clean yourself up, it makes you feel good. Yeah. Yeah. When you dress up, it makes you feel good. So what I need to do is, watch this, I need to feel good when I come to the house. I shouldn't come to the house, watch this here, for the pastor to make me feel good. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't come to the house of God, watch this here, for the choir to make me feel good. Right. I shouldn't come to the house of God for somebody to give a testimony to make me feel good. I ought to come to the house of God feeling good. Right. All right. Remember the little lady that that uh, her and her, her, uh, her and her husband uh, did this thing for for God, built the room and everything mm -hmm. for, for the man of God and everything, right. and, and he asked her what what he could do for her, mm -hmm. and she had a baby. Well, her baby died, and she went looking for him to let him know the baby died. But watch what happened when they saw her and they asked her how she was doing. She said, "I'm doing well." Mm. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Why, why is God saying this? Because, see, certain things go on in your life. Certain things go on in your life, and it snatches your joy. It snatches your praise from you. Right. So when you come to the house of God, when you come to the house of God, you all discombobulate because you don't let something in the world snatch your praise. You don't let right. something in the world snatch your joy. And right. then you come around people when the Bible says, iron sharpens iron, so does a man sharpen kind of his friends. Well, can't, you can't sharpen nobody. <laughs> and when you come like you come, can't nobody sharpen you. Right. All right. That's true. You come in here dull, so ain't nobody wants to rub it up against them because I'm not, listen, God is not making light of your situation, but he's saying you shouldn't let nothing rob you of your joy. Right. Whatever that went on out there, when you get ready to come to the house of God, I was glad when they said yes. unto me, Amen. let me go to the house of the Lord because right. I got some brothers and some sisters right. that's going to sharpen me when I get there. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. So I'm going to get myself together. I'm reminded of David. David lost that baby. He wasn't supposed to have no way, but God took the baby. Yes, God took the baby. Mm -hmm. And now while the baby was still sick in the last of the lane, he fasted and he prayed. He fasted and he prayed. When the baby died, he since the baby had died, his servant over there talking, they said, okay, what, what can happen? The baby died. They said, yeah. Well, guess what David did? He David got, got up. up, washed himself, cleaned himself up, got him a little bite to eat, and went on to church. Amen. All right. Amen. Went on the church. The significance of the house of God in the sanctuary. When you know you on your way to the church, you ought to get a smile on your face, get some joy and a praise in you and say, Oh, it's gonna be good. It ain't good over here, but when I get to the house of God, it's gonna be yeah, good. All right. Amen. 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 Right. Amen. I don't care what's Amen. going on in my life, because this too shall pass. Amen. 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 Weeping may do for a night, but there's a morning coming, joy coming in the morning. I'm going to make my way to the house of God, and I'm going to get with my brothers and sisters, some folk that's like-minded with me, Amen. and they're going to sharpen my faith and help me. Boy, look here, don't make me do it. Don't make me do it. Don't make me do it. Do it, sir. Do it. And so what I do is I get myself up. I don't let nothing... Tear me down like that. I'm on my way to the house of God, and I know when I get there, oh, it's going to be on and cracking. Amen. Amen. 
But I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna make sure that I get myself together. Say get myself together. Get, get myself, myself together. together. Make sure I get myself together. Watch this here. So I don't become a stumbling block to you. That's I don't right. become a stumbling stone to you. I don't get myself together. Amen. Right. Because great is he that's in me, that he that's in this world. Amen. Yeah. Amen. In Numbers chapter 8, we're gonna start at verse number one. All right, sir. Bishop, real quick. Uh, to that to that point you made about us getting ourselves together before we come in, uh, at, just to that point, we got to remember that everything is a is a choice. That's uh, right. So so for us to to show up here and expect somebody else to to do something for us, even in that, we're still now making an, a choice. So let's just say I come to the church and I'm you know I'm down in in the dumps or whatever, and I'm expecting the choir to make me feel better. Right. Mm -hmm. Even once the choir sings, you now are making a choice to feel better. Right. You could have mm -hmm. made that same choice before you came to the door. Right. So we have to just remind ourselves that it's n just like folks don't make us mad. Just like right. folks can't, you know, do all these other things. We are all making a conscious choice. And by the time we get in here trying to let somebody else make us feel better or we try to decide to make up to, to change once we get here, it's really almost too late. Oh yeah, <laughs> we didn't. We didn't. We didn't. We didn't already missed out. Right. By the time we didn't made the choice to pick up our countenance and and, and move forward. Right. And so God is making, he's, he's letting us know because they preparing the Levites in these verses we're gonna look at. They preparing the Levites for service. They preparing them for service. Watch this here for what's next. They in life, Timothy. But okay, here's the next coming. They've been chosen by God. Watch now. To keep the charge and the operations of the house, the spiritual leaders of the house, they'll be in charge to do spiritual, uh, spiritual work and be the spiritual leaders of God's house is what they are being chosen to do. And so I'll let you know that Red Sea, you've been chosen by God. Amen. Amen. You have been chosen Amen. by God. Thank you, Father. You have been chosen by God to be spiritual leadership for others. You have been chosen by God to do that. And everything that God is doing in your life is to consecrate you and to get you preparated for what's coming next. Mm -hmm. Okay, we know some things are going on in our world, but there's a next. Mm -hmm. And so we don't want to get caught up with what's going on around here. We got to also be conscious of what's next. That's right. So I got to be talking to God about what do I do to get ready for what's next. Why well, just here? Right. Because this is over for me. Right, oh. right. Hey. Amen. Yes, I know it's still lingering around, but it's over for me. I'm through with it. Right. I'm done with this. Mm -hmm. I'm not giving it no more space or place in my life. I'm through with it. Amen. What do we do next? Amen. Prepare me for the next. And that's what they are being, the Levites are being prepared. They are chosen by God, the first fruit of Israel, to operate in the house of God, Amen. to take care of the house of God. That's what they've been chosen to do. Amen. And so let's look at this because in, in these first verses, we're going to see that he, they talks about how it is that they are, they talk about some lamps and some lights in their life. Mm -hmm. How are they dealing with some lights and lamps? We understand that the scripture said that the word of God is a light and lamp to my path, right? Mm -hmm. And to my feet, and Jesus said that we are the light of the world. Right. We are the light of the world. This is important mm -hmm. because when I come around other people, I need to be a shining example for them. Right. right. Yeah. I need to be a shining example for the world or uh, anybody I come in contact with. I need to be a shining example for them. They need to be able to see, watch this here, our sin, that I've been in the presence of God. I have spent time with God. It's something different about you. Everybody else in this room, I can just about pin peg them, point them out, but it's something different about you. You ain't like the rest of us. Amen. Mm. Amen. You've been chosen by God mm. to be a light. This is what it says in verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, who spoke to him? The Lord. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, watch this. He says, speak unto Aaron, say unto him, when thou lightest the lamps, the seven lamps shall give light over against the candlesticks. And Aaron did, so watch this, he lighted the lamps thereof over against the candlesticks as the Lord commanded Moses. Y'all see this? Mm -hmm. All right, now you got to understand this is important. That that is a that is a standard for the house of God. Amen. That is a standard. Amen. And I'm sorry to say it. I'm sorry to say it. I, I, I'm sorry to say it. But I'm gonna say it. I'm sorry to say it. 
God has given Bishop the standards for the house. Amen. Uh, all right, all right. God has given me the standard for the house. And if you have a problem with the standards that God has given Bishop for the house, you do one or two things. You go before God and ask God to help you deal with the standards of the house or find another house to go to. Mm. That's hard, that's hard, that's hard. It's your word from God. This is Bible study, but I need you to hear what God is saying right now. Because Moses gets it from God. He gives it to Aaron. He tells Aaron exactly what to do. And Aaron go do what God told Moses. That's right. I need y'all, I need y'all to come, yeah. come in the room. Come in the room. Come yeah. in the room. You don't have to say amen, but just act like you're still in the room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it said that Aaron did. He so Aaron did so. He lighted the lamp thereof over against the candlesticks as the Lord commanded Moses. Y'all see this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if we're not following the instructions of the house, we cannot expect God to move in the house like God want to move in the house. Amen. We stifle the move of God in the house because we don't follow instructions. Now, now I'm, I'm getting ready to use me for an example, and I was so glad, I was so glad that Reverend Stevenson said what she said, but I was also glad John said what he said, though. And, you know, sometimes, you know, people just wait for Bishop to do something wrong, and, and so they can point it out to him. Now, I don't want you to get offended or get mad when I say this because I want you to understand I thank God for both of them saying what they said on this particular day. Reverend Stevenson told me, she said, look like them chairs are a little too far up there. Too far. I said, what well, do you want to say like that tonight? Well, John, John hopped on that boy like a dog with a bone. If that had been me <laughs> saying that. <laughs> Ooh, we It'd have been on. Right. Watch this now, watch this now, watch this now. I'm glad God did that because if I'm going to tell you to do it right, i got to be doing it right. Amen. All right, all right, right. yes. So right. see, I didn't get twisted by that. I didn't get twisted by that at all, and guess what I did? I went over there and moved them chairs back. Amen, God. We thank because, you. because there's a standard in the house. Amen. Y'all don't want to talk yeah, to me. Yes, sir. It's because there's a standard, and we know what the standard is, Sister Tanya. We know what the standard is, and if the leader's not going to keep hold everything to standard, right. how do we expect yeah, anybody else. else to hold Amen. the standard? That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. Yeah. And so how, how do I, how, how can I expect you to respect what God tells me to do when I tell you if I'm not following God's example? I tell you to do it like this here for four, five weeks, and then I come back and, we're, and I go do it some other kind of way. H how is that? Right. No, no, we're going we gonna to meet the standard. All of us. We're going we're gonna to meet the standards. Whatever God say, that's what we're going to do. Is that right? Yes. That's what we're going to do. Verse number four. And, and this work of the candlestick was of beating gold unto the shaft thereof, Unto the flowers thereof was beaten works according unto the pattern which the Lord had showed Moses, so he made the candlesticks. Y'all see that? Yes. Mm -hmm. God gives it to Moses, and Moses gives it to the rest of the congregation. Right. We're talking about the significance of the house, the importance of the sanctuary. We got to make sure, watch this, that we do it the right way, the same way every time. That's right. Because, watch this, it's not the sanctuary unless we do. And God don't have to show up if we don't. That's right. If you look in scripture, every time they erected the tabernacle, they did it the same way every time. Watch this. Don't grow weary in well doing. doing it. You keep doing it the same way every, every time. time. Watch this here. Jesus don't change. The Bible says he changes not. He's saying yesterday, today, and forever. All right. And so God, listen, when God show up, he wanted to look, at, look, look like he did the last time he was here. Amen. Right. See, God don't get bored with standards we do. Mm -hmm. God don't want to change. We just always got to want to change. Why this here? God is satisfied all the time and we ain't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we get tired of seeing it this way. Okay, but watch this here. But if, if you got the right, watch this here. Watch this here now. What I see matters. And my perception is everything. Uh -huh. And so what I need to see is, why is it because every time we do it the way we do it, you ought to say, you know what? I see God now. Mm -hmm. I see the Lord now. 
Why? Because the Lord was the one that gave us instructions on how to set this up. So when you walk in the door, you might not sense his presence, but you ought to be to look around and say, I see the hand of God now. I see his All hand. Right. I see the hand of God now. I see the hand of God. Yes. Yes, sir. Amen. Watch this. And so if this is right, the rest of the service is going to be good. Amen. Come on here, y'all. Yes, if this is right, the rest of the service is going to be good. Right. Because there's order in the house. Right. Mm. And God is God. And God is God of order, John. And so it lets us know, it lets us know everything is being set up the way the Lord told Moses. This is important that he keep me, this is the way I told Moses to do it, and Moses told them to do it that way. All right. Mm. Watch now. Let's look at verse number, start at verse number five now. Watch this. Because now they get ready to talk about, they get, because now everything is done according to the pattern. Y'all see that? According to the pattern. Now, watch this. Now that the house, oh, I love this. Now that the house is set up, the house is set up, now I need to set my people up. I need to get my people together now. Amen. So now, now the house is together. Now everything's set up in the house, but now he's getting his people together. You get ready to see he's going to get his people yeah. together so that the people match what's going on in the house. Okay. Because I need for your will to be done. Yeah. Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. That's right. So it don't make no sense for the house to be in order and you out of order. Don't make no sense for the house to be in order and then with the people of the house are out of order. Mm. Okay, yeah, the house is in order, but, but God ain't showing up because now my people, if my people who are called by my name uh -huh. would order up. Mm. All right, sir. So I'm expecting God to come in and show up. Watch, I'm expecting God to come in and show up and do his thing, but I'm not doing my thing. Mm. I'm not doing the things that God is telling me to do. Mm. Watch this, family. Watch this now. We're in verse, in verse number five. We still in Numbers chapter eight, verse five. And the Lord spake unto Moses. Look at that. Look, 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 look. God is steady speaking to Moses. Mm -hmm. That's right. Watch this now. I, I know, listen to me. I know that God speaks to everybody that belong to him. That's mm -hmm. right. But I want you to understand something. I'm, this is not just saying that to say this, but I'm going to say this to you. God speaks to me different than he speaks to you. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. He speaks to me different because of the calling on my life. Amen. He speaks to me different because of where I am in your life. Amen. Okay. Amen. Watch this. And so God spoke to Moses saying, watch this. Take the Levite from among the children of Israel and cleanse them. Watch this now. Take the Levite from among. He's choosing, handpicking certain people because of the, 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 the service that they're going to perform for him. Right. Okay. Just like God handpicked who he want to be deacons. Just like he handpicked who he want to be ushers. Just like he handpicked who he want to be in the choir. Who he want to be uh, uh, preachers of the gospel. God handpicked them, watch now, and he consecrated them and sanctified them for that thing. Because you need a, watch this here, you need a wisdom for where you operate at. Whatever, whatever arm you in, on, you need a wisdom for that area. Yeah, man. And God give everybody a wisdom for their area. That's why anybody can't be an usher. Anybody can't be a deacon. Anybody can't be in the choir. Watch this. Take the Levites from among the children of Israel and cleanse them. Watch this now. Watch this now. And thus, thus shall thou do unto them. Watch this. To cleanse them. Watch this say. Sprinkle water of purifying upon them. Let them shave all their flesh. Let them wash their clothes and so make themselves clean. Mm -hmm. Watch this now. Watch this now. Is Moses cleansing, cleaning them and he's shaving them all? He's giving them instructions on what to do. Uh -huh. Right. Come on here, y'all. He's, he's not bathing and shaving them, Timothy, <laughs> right. but he's giving them instructions on what to do. God said, this is how they clean themselves. Right. Amen. Come on here. He said, like, this is how they clean this up. Y'all did read that, right? Verse yeah. 7? Uh -huh. Yeah. He says, sprinkle water of purifying upon them and let them. Mm -hmm. Now, watch this now. Watch this now. Watch this now. Can, can I help y'all with something? Yes. Watch this. There are certain waters. Watch this, Jordan. There are certain waters that they use. Watch this. For, for purification services and ceremonies. Just like there are certain oils, anointing oils, certain oils that they use for certain things for service. Okay? And so he said, this is what I want you to do. Sprinkle a little water on them. Just a little bit. 
Just sprinkle a little water on them. You sprinkle a little water on them. Why just say because this is a form of baptism. Mm. Well, amen. This is a form of baptism. They are being chosen for stuff. This is a form of baptism and consecration for them. Notice yes, he didn't tell them, he didn't tell them baptize them. Right. But he did say sprinkle. Because this is a form of baptism, but he what is of consecration, but you're not to bathe them. I want them to bathe themselves. Come on, Amen. Right. Right. Watch this here. So uh, I, I need for you to provide some water for them, but I need for them to bathe themselves. Mm -hmm. Because they got to know that they got a responsibility in this too. Y'all ain't talking mm -hmm. to me tonight, are you? That's right. Yeah. That's right. And, and so watch this. And so and so Bishop, watch this here. So Bishop has anointed y'all. Amen. You know, there was for consecration and preparation. Come on, sir. He told me to anoint y'all yes. with the services, yes. uh -huh. and I did that. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Watch this now. But it is not my job to make sure you stay holy. Amen. 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 It's not my responsibility to make sure, watch this, it's not my responsibility to make sure that you where you're supposed to be. That's not my responsibility. Mm -hmm. You have to take responsibility for yourself. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. So he said, you provide the water. He said, well, watch this though now. Watch this though now. Hmm. Sprinkle them with water to pur uh, uh, purify them upon them and let them shave all their flesh. And let them wash their clothes. Mm -hmm. And so make themselves clean. Mm -hmm. Y'all see that, right? Right. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So watch this. It's nobody's, it's nobody's position. It's not the choirs. It's nobody's testimony. It's not me getting up here praying that's supposed to clean you. That's right. Come on, sir. Jesus said, watch this here. Jesus said, you're cleansed by the word that I preach. That's right. You're cleansed by the washing of the water of the word. Mm -hmm. Now we say. That's scripture. Watch this now. Watch this now. Watch now. Because you have to understand, you have to understand if you don't come to church and bring some God with you, mm -hmm. then you can't really expect God to be with you then. Come on, mm -hmm. Lord. Come on. Mm -hmm. Come on. Because all of us that belong to God has got God with us. Mm -hmm. We one with God and God is one with us. Mm -hmm. But if I come in here with the wrong attitude, wrong spirit, wrong spirit yes. mm -hmm. then I came in here without God. Mm -hmm. I didn't come here without God. So watch this now. Watch this now. Because he's preparing them for service. Mm -hmm. He's preparing them for service for a work in the house of God, for serving in the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And so watch. You got to prepare yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you all the water you need. Mm -hmm. God's going to give you all the water you need called the Holy Ghost. Amen. But if you're quenching it. Amen. Come on, sir. Yeah. If you're quenching it. Ain't nothing I can do about that. Ain't nothing God can do about that. So he said, quench not the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Watch this here. Let the water do for you what the water is supposed to do. Y'all don't want to All right. All right. Yes, sir. Come on. Let the water work. Let the water work. Watch this here. But I need for you, watch this here. I need you to back away from that stuff that's in your flesh. Get out your come flesh. On, come on. I, I, I need you to do that. Mm -hmm. I can't get you out your flesh. I need you to get right. out your flesh. Amen. Work the word now. I need you to come, man. I need for you to get out of your, shave your flesh. Mm -hmm. He said, let them clean their clothes, mm -hmm. so make themselves clean. Mm -hmm. So I'm not responsible, watch this here, I'm not responsible for cleaning you up. Mm -hmm. I just catch fish, I don't clean them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All, right. All right, come on, Bishop. It's not my responsibility to clean you up. I provide provide you what you need and then you clean yourself. I tell you what you need to do. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I, I tell you what you need to do to clean yourself up. Right. So when God had me to send y'all that text message, y'all yeah. got it? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. He said, I need you to yeah. talk, talk to God and ask God, how do you get yourself together for what's next? And then he gave me scripture to show you how people went and got themselves consecrated. Right. Come on, sir. And so now, watch this here. I didn't sprinkle the water on you. But now you got to clean yourself up. Come Amen. On, sir. Amen. That's good. You got to clean yourself up. Now, I didn't give you the instructions, the guidance, and the direction you need to take. Now, you got to do something with it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. 
Then let them take a young bullock with his meat offering, even fine flour mingled with oil, and another young bullock shall thou take for a sin offering. Okay, well, watch this here. We don't have to do sacrifices no more because Jesus was our living sacrifice. That's right. But you do have to, watch this here. Don't get too happy yet. Don't get too happy. <laughs> he's your eternal sacrifice. Glory. Mm -hmm. Amen. I say he's your eternal sacrifice. Yeah. But yeah. Jesus said, watch this now. Jesus said you got to pick up your cross every day. And yeah. deny yeah. yourself yeah. every day. Yeah. This is your sacrifice. Yeah. And yeah. deny yourself every day. Got it. I present my body as, as a living, living sacrifice, sacrifice holy yes, except one God, which is my reasonable service. Do not be conformed yeah. to the ways of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. <laughs> Clean yourself up. Clean yourself up. Every day. He's your eternal sacrifice, but you got to consecrate yourself daily. That's good, Bishop. You got to choose that you're going to consecrate yourself daily. You know why? Because you're expecting God to use you some kind of way every day. Yes, yes. Lord. I want to be used. Not just on Sunday, but every day. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Mm. That's how folks mm. come to Jesus. Mm. Watch this now. Verse 9. And thou shalt bring the Levites before the tabernacle of the congregation, and thou shalt gather the whole assembly of the children of Israel together. Watch this, because he's getting ready to let everybody know, John, what, they, what he's getting ready to do with the Levites. Watch this, and he's, he's doing this, Sister Tanya, so that they don't get beside themselves. Because remember what Miriam and Aaron said to Moses? Mm. Oh, you think you're something. You ain't better than us. God, you ain't the only one God's speaking to. Be careful now. Be careful now. Be, be careful now. And so they showing them, they showing them family, oh look, God, God chose these people to do a certain thing. And this is what they have been choosing, chosen to do. And, and you got either you like it or you don't. But this is what God is choosing these people to do this work. Y'all still praying for me? Yes, sir. Yes. Watch this then. Verse 10. And thou shalt bring the Levites before the Lord, and the children of Israel shall put their hands upon the Levites. Say they lay in hand. They, they lay in hand. hand. Watch this now. And Aaron shall offer the Levites before the Lord for an offering. Mm. Watch this now. Lord, we consecrate these people to do the work. Watch this now. Y'all remember Hannah wanted a baby, right? Mm -hmm. yes. And what did she tell God she's going to do with the baby once she got it? Give it she back to him. Give it back right. to him. To him. Watch this now. That they may execute the service of the Lord. This is what they offer up for. So they what? So they execute the service of the Lord. Perform the service of the Lord. Verse 12. And the Levites shall lay their hands upon the heads of the bullocks. And thou shalt offer for one a sin offering, the other for a burnt offering unto the Lord to make an atonement for the Levites. Y'all see that? Mm. Watch this here. So that their sins be forgiven. They, back then you had to pay for your sins yourself. Yeah, I say back then you had to pay for your sins yourself. You better be glad you ain't got to pay for your sins yourself right now. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Jesus, for paying it all. Verse 13. And thou shalt set the Levites before Aaron and before his sons and offer them up for an offering unto the Lord. 14. Thou shalt... Thus shalt thou separate the Levite from among the children of Israel, and the Levite shall be mine. Mm. And the Levite shall be mine. Mm. Watch this now. Say, that's the tithe. That's, that's the, the tithe. tithe. That's right. That's the tithe. These belong to me. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Verse 15. And after that shall the Levites go into the into do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Where are they working? In the they church. working in the church. In the church right. That's right. They're working in the, house, in the sanctuary. Because remember now, remember, you got to remember something. Church wasn't like it is today, everybody going to church. There was only certain people could go to church. Why this? And thou shalt cleanse them and offer them for an offering. Verse 16. For they are holy given unto me 
from among the children of Israel instead of such an opening, I mean, I'm such as open every wound, even instead of the firstborn of all the children of Israel, have I taken them unto me. Mm -hmm. He said, these are the firstborn, these are the first fruit, this is the tithe. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Right. Verse 17, for all the firstborn of the children of Israel are mine, which both uh, man and beast. On the day that I smote every firstborn in the land of Egypt, I sanctified them for myself. Mm -hmm. Look at that right there. He said, I sanctified them for myself. 18, y'all ready? Mm -hmm. Yes. And I have taken the Levite for all the firstborn of the children of Israel. He said, I have taken the Levite for the firstborn of all the children of Israel. Verse 19, watch this. And I have given the Levite as a gift to Aaron and to his sons from among the children of Israel. Amen. I want you to know that y'all are a gift to me from God. Amen. Y'all are a gift to me from God. Watch this though, to help me do the service of God right. in the house of God. Yes. Yes. So when we all get together again, <laughs> need me to have the right mindset yeah. Have, have the right heart because you're not here just to warm a seat. You're here to help me do service in the sanctuary. That's right. To glorify God. Mm. Amen. Mm. Start 19 from the beginning again. Mm -hmm. And I have given the Levites as a gift unto Aaron and unto his sons from among the children of Israel to do the service of the children of, of, the, uh, of Israel in the tabernacle of the congregation. Watch this. To make an atonement for the children of Israel. Y'all see that? Amen. To make an atonement for all of Israel. Mm -hmm. That there be no plague among the children of Israel when the children of Israel come not unto the sanctuary. Mm. Uh, y'all don't know what to shout. If y'all really paying attention, y'all would shout it right there. Because he said, watch now, he said, watch now, he said, I'm giving them as a gift to you, watch this, as an atonement for you, so when you come to the sanctuary, no plague, no sickness, no disease can come nigh you. Amen. Amen. Right. I want y'all to read what y'all ain't read. Nah, I want you. Let me read it to you again. Thank you, Lord. Let me give it to you again. Verse 19. And I have given the Levites as a gift to Aaron and to his son from among the children of Israel to do the service of the children of Israel in the tabernacle of the congregation, like this, and to make an atonement for the children of Israel, that there be no plague among the children of Israel. Mm. It didn't say among the children of the Levites. It said among the children of Israel, there shall be no plague among mm. the children of Israel. Amen. Amen. Right. right. Come on here. When the children of Israel come nigh unto the sanctuary. Come on, sir. Because the Levites got it right. Because the Levites got it right. Come on, sir. Why this here? They doing all the sacrificing for me. All right. Because they represent right. Jesus. Because yeah. Jesus did all the sacrificing for me. Y'all, uh, y'all, I told y'all, I told y'all, I told y'all, I'm trying to sharpen you right now, but you ain't letting me do it. <laughs> and, and so he's saying, why this here? He's talking about this is the importance and the significance of the sanctuary. See, I got some folk that I done handpicked. I got some folk that I have chosen in Red Sea. Watch this here now. Watch this here. Watch this here. That I've chosen to pray over all of y'all. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Glory! I got some folk that I done chose in Red Sea that when you ain't praying, oh, they praying Glory. to make Thank sure. Watch this here. They are they praying and they praying to make sure that nothing happened to you. And, and, and what? Because they are sacrificing their time with me. They sacrificing for me. Watch this here. And they sacrificing for you. Amen. They sacrificing for you. So no, don't nothing come nigh you when you come. All right. All right. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. See, this is why God told me to say to us. See, when we living right, doing the right thing in here, you, you listen, listen, church is the last place you don't want to be. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. I know that's right. Look here. If, if I got a crawl, I'm going to make it to the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Because I know it's some sacrifices that's been made for me, and can't nothing come nigh me in that sanctuary. Mm -hmm. No plague, no sickness, no disease will come nigh me. And watch this here. And as we commit ourselves, Timothy, listen, sir. As we commit ourselves to God and the work of God, I'm telling you what God is saying. He say, no sickness, no disease, no plagues will come near you. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's his word. Yeah. I'm not making this up. I'm, I'm not trying to make the Bible say nothing. 
I'm using this Bible to speak to you to let you know what God is saying. Mm -hmm. This should never happen to the church again. Mm -hmm. It should never happen to the church again. You can close every door. Don't close them church doors, though. Amen. I know that's right. You can lock every door in the city, in the country. Don't lock them church doors. Amen. Amen. We can go to church and we ain't worried about nothing coming up on us. Ain't no sickness, ain't no disease gonna get us if we go to church. Mm -hmm. That's why when you come up here sniffing and coughing and carrying on and Bishop hug you. I hug you. You know why? Because I'm in church. I'm the church. I'm the church. I'm not worried about catching nothing. Nothing grabbing a hold to me. I'm where God make it happen at. Right. I ain't running. Y'all still with me? Yes, sir. Okay, watch this now. Because he said, he said they they've been offered up as an offering for, for you to do the exe, to, to execute the service of the Lord. Verse 12. And the Levites shall lay hands upon the head. Okay, where, where was I? I 20. 20. We said 20. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm back over here at verse 20. And Moses and Aaron, all the congregation of the children of Israel, did to the Levites according unto all the law command Moses concerning the Levites, so did the children of Israel unto them. Mm -hmm. Y'all see that? Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Say there's a standard. There's a standard. There's a standard. There's a standard. We have to do the, the things that God is telling us to do the way God is telling us to do it. If we want things to be right in the sanctuary, mm -hmm. if we want things to happen right for us in the sanctuary, Amen. this is a safe haven for you. The, listen, I'm telling you right now, the church is supposed to be the safest place on the planet. True. Mm -hmm. yeah. Watch this now. Can I help y'all right quick? You know Eden was the safest place on the planet? Right. That's right. Oh, yeah. Eden was the safest place on the planet because what is it? It was sin in the world, but it wasn't none of Eden. Yeah. Right. That's right. Come on now, come on now, come on now, come on now. It wasn't until it wasn't until sin came in. Mm -hmm. Right. And God looked at it and God held up and got it out there. Right. Hmm. Because there ain't supposed to be no sin in Eden. Right. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Yes, sir. And God would hurry up and get us out of here because there ain't supposed to be no sin in here. Amen. Yes, Ain't supposed to be no sin in here. <laughs> okay, Lord. Ain't supposed to be no sinning in mm -hmm. here. All right, amen. All right. No sinning going on in here. Sinful flesh is in here, but acts of sin should not be going on in here. Amen. Verse 21, and the Levites were purified and they washed their clothes and Aaron offered them as an offering before the Lord and Aaron made an atonement for them to cleanse them. them. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. To cleanse them. And so watch this. He makes an atonement for them. He, he, had, a, he had a sacrifice aside for them. <clears throat> and once that sacrifice was made, now their sins are forgiven. They cleanse from all unrighteousness. And so watch this now. And so now the scripture tells us that we can be forgiven and cleansed from all unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. But we walk around with sin, man. We, we walk around with it so much. I mean, we just walk around and pack it around. And God says, if I acknowledge it, mm -hmm. give it over to the Lord, he'll forgive me. Amen. And cleanse me mm -hmm. from all unrighteousness. Verse 1 and 2. And after they went, the Levites, into their service in the tabernacle of the congregation before Aaron and before his sons, as the Lord had commanded Moses concerning the Levites, so did they unto them. Y'all see how this is important? Mm -hmm. As God gave Moses the commandments and instruction, Moses passed it down, and the ones he passed it down to did like he said. Uh -huh. All right. I want y'all to know this is no campaign for bishop. I'm not using scripture to campaign for my leadership. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not doing this to get you to do nothing I say to you. What The reason God is doing this is because, listen, if you want to be blessed and you believe that God is talking to me, then you need to do what I'm telling you. Exactly. What God has given me, he's given me for us. Right now. All right. Right now. If we look back in history, God gave the man of God what he wanted for his people. Mm -hmm. And that man gave his people, God's people, what God wanted his people to have. Mm -hmm. And they executed it. If they didn't, if they didn't, they got executed. True. <laughs> True. So the wages of sin is still there. Mm -hmm. I mean, that ain't one away, right? The right. wages of sin right. is still yeah. there. And so you may not fall dead, but stuff will start dying around you. Mm -hmm. Stuff will start breaking around you. Mm -hmm. Just because we won't do what God said. Mm -hmm. Verse 23, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, boy, God is speaking to Moses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, this is it that belongeth unto the Levites from 20 and 5 years old and upward. They shall go in to wait upon the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Y'all see this? Mm -hmm. He's given Moses instruction on how to situate people in the sanctuary and in the church. Okay. Verse 25, watch this, y'all. And from the age of 50 years, they shall cease waiting upon the service thereof and shall serve no more. Mm -hmm. Watch now, in that capacity. Right. right. Okay. Uh, I realize that we got some elderly folk in our church. And we don't, we don't expect the elderly to do what young folk can do. Right. That's right. We, That's we're right. not requiring elderly folk to operate and function like young people because we know better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I need for the elderly in this church, listen, to not be so proud and sit down. Watch now, watch now. Sit down and guide with your fingers when you go. Y'all gonna get this in a minute. All right. No, we good. See, the elderly, the seniors got wisdom. Mm -hmm. Come on, sir. They got wisdom, mm -hmm. and they can give some guidance on how things, because they still, they still in the sanctuary, they still in the church, they still a part of the church, they still valuable to the church. That's watch right. this, but they right. just, they, watch this here, they just serving from a different place now. Right. right. I'm still a pretty young man. I'm, I'm not pretty, that's what I'm saying. I'm a relatively young man still. All right? Listen, and there's still some things I can do, but there's still some things I think I can do that I can't. Mm -hmm. All right. And so, and so because I understand now I can't do those things, I don't do them. Now, if there's nobody around that I ask God to give me grace and I go ahead and do it because there ain't nobody else to do it. But I leave all the heavy stuff to these young bucks. I leave it to the young men, young women. Hey, go ahead on and lift that building if you want to. <laughs> I don't have nothing to prove. I ain't going to lift it. <laughs> Amen. I'm not going to prove to you that I still am who I am. I am who I am, and I'm going to stay who I am because I ain't doing that. Amen. Right. <laughs> Look what he say right here now because this is in your Bible. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You can't expect, look at me, honey, look at me, look at me. You can't expect, you can't expect senior citizens to do what you do because they can't. You can't expect it. Don't expect it. It's disrespect for you to expect that from them. Come on, sir. That's right. Come on, here, listen to what he said. But, let me read 25 again. Watch this. 
From the age of 50 years, they shall cease waiting upon the service thereof and shall serve no more. Like this. But, y'all see that? But. but shall minister with their brethren in the tabernacle of the congregation to keep the charge. Uh -huh. mm. And shall do no service, thus shall thou do unto the Levites touching their charge. So watch this. They still serving, but they men and women of wisdom. Right. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Keep the charge. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to use you for a minute. You've been doing what you're doing right now with Red Sea for some years. So now you ought to be at that place to where you can instruct from there. Mm -hmm. You ought to be able to go, you ought to be able to teach how to set the sanctuary up without having to lift a finger. Right. Because it comes a time to where us old fogies got to step out the way and let young people do what young people been put here to do and not feel bad about it. That's right. right. There you go. I can't wait for God to get some more people up in here. Mm -hmm. Young people up in here. I can't wait. Huh? Are y'all listening to what God is saying? Yeah. Talking about you. <laughs> Why? Because once we get back into the sanctuary, Brother Timothy, our mind got to be different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mind got to be different. Because watch this. Whether y'all believe it or not, things have changed. Oh, yeah. yeah. Things have changed. And so we can't come back in the sanctuary and pick up where we left off. Mm -hmm. Because we got to come in here knowing some things done change. Yeah. Watch this here. Whether you believe it or not, you didn't change. Amen. Mm. Praise yes. the Lord. Yes, you have. You didn't change. Mm. And now we got to operate according to that. Let me tell you what's, what's, what's not going to surprise me and not going to make me angry if I see somebody come to church with a mask on. Because mm. yeah. it may happen. That's right. Yeah. It may happen. And I'm not going to be offended or mad about it. That's right. Because we done changed. Right. That's right. That's right. And whether we believe it or not, we done changed. The way things are going, the way God is directing this church, like I told, told them the other day, I'm, I'm noticing now that there's some things we're doing that's not going to go away. It's going to be a permanent part of who we are now. Mm -hmm. Live streaming is going to be a permanent part of who we are now. It's not going away. Amen. So we got to adjust to that. Mm -hmm. Y'all still praying? Yes, sir. Numbers chapter 18. See, I, I can tell when the enemy don't like stuff, boy. I can tell when the enemy don't like what you're saying. That's all right. Oh. We ain't trying to push them to enemy. Mm -hmm. We're going to like it. That means we're doing it right. Hmm. Amen. I need for y'all to know that things have been changed. <laughs> Not drastically, but they've been changed. Mm -hmm. Shit. We in Numbers chapter 18. We're going to start at verse number one. Y'all ready? Amen. Yes, sir. Chapter 18. Yes, ma'am. Numbers chapter 18. Listen to what it says. And the Lord said unto Aaron, Thou and thy sons and thy father's house with thee shall bear the iniquity of the sanctuary. Mm. And thou and thy sons with thee shall bear the iniquity of your priesthood. Mm. Y'all see that? Oh, yeah. Y'all yeah, got to hear God now. Uh, yeah, more than I want to. <laughs> got to hear God now. And thy brethren also of the tribes of Levi, the tribes of thy father, bring thou with thee that they may be joined unto thee and minister unto thee. 
but thou and thy sons with thee shall minister before the tabernacle of the, y'all see that? Mm -hmm. Of the witnesses. Now, now he's showing everybody, he's giving instructions to everybody about what positions they've taken and what, what responsibilities they have. Right. And I need you to understand that if you're a member of Red Sea, you got responsibilities whether you like it or not. Yes, sir. You got responsibilities whether you want them or not. You got responsibilities. And God is going to hold you responsible. I know what you're saying. Okay. <laughs> Verse 3, y'all ready? Mm -hmm. And they shall keep thy charge, and the charge of all the tabernacle. Only they shall not come nigh the vessels of the sanctuary and the altar, that neither they nor ye also die. So why is this? What are you saying? There are certain things that you ain't supposed to do. Right. Because you ain't been called to do it. Hmm. Yeah. Yes, sir. Certain things you ain't supposed to do because you ain't been called to do it. You haven't been picked and chose to do it. But watch this here. I'm going to throw it up to you catch it if you want to. You know God has told you to do something. That's right. You know God has told you to do something. And God said, when you come back to the sanctuary, you need to be ready to do the something I told you to do. Come on, Amen. Sir. Amen. Okay. Consecrate and ready. He didn't tell me to tell you to consecrate yourself and everything for nothing now. You got to be ready when you come back to the sanctuary. Your mind got to be different now. Okay, all right. Amen, yes, sir. There's a reason for me being here. That's why he said talk to, talk to God. Let the Holy Spirit tell you what you need to do to get ready. Amen. So when you walk back up in here, you come ready. Watch this now, and I can promise you, I can promise you if you do that, when you walk in these doors, you're going to sense a whole different atmosphere in here if you do what God tells you to do right Amen. now. All right. Amen. All right. Could right. you imagine yeah. what it would be like in here if everybody coming here consecrated? Nah, man. That would be awesome. good. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I said, could you imagine what it would be like if everybody came up in here consecrated? True church. Oh, oh, we'll, find <laughs> we'll find out if everybody take what God is saying serious. Mm -hmm. If we take it serious, we'll see. Watch this right here. Watch this right here. I'm talking about the presence of God in here so much can't nobody stand up in it. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's real. Mm -hmm. That's real. I, I just, I'm praying that somebody going to try me. Mm -hmm. I'm praying that somebody going to do it. Yeah. Verse 4. And they shall be joined unto thee and keep the charge of the tabernacle of the congregation for all the service of the tabernacle. And a stranger shall not come nigh unto you. Mm -hmm. Why is this important now? Because he's talking about folk, folks taking care of their areas of responsibility and doing their service. Watch this. And we say a stranger won't come to, not to you. That he's talking about somebody that's not supposed to be doing that work. Right. Amen. He's not talking about a stranger off the street. Stranger is somebody that's not supposed to be doing that. Mm -hmm. You're a stranger if you, listen, if you if you over here messing around with the choir, you know you ain't in the choir. Mm -hmm. You're a stranger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're a stranger. If, if you're messing with the usher stuff and you're not an usher, you're a stranger. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Because, see, the choir is consecrated That's right. for the choir. Mm -hmm. Ushers are consecrated for ushering. Mm -hmm. Deacons are consecrated for deaconing. Mm -hmm. And anything that comes in there that's not, that's a stranger. Mm -hmm. Because your spirits ain't mm -hmm. lining up together. Mm -hmm. Verse 5. And you shall keep the charge of the what? Sanctuary. sanctuary and the charge of the altar that there be no wrath anymore upon the children of Israel. Man. Yo, yo, I'm in the Bible oh. right here, family. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm helping you with this and God is telling us, God is telling us, if you keep the charge yeah. and you serve like you're supposed to serve, humble yourself and do what you're supposed to do in the sanctuary, he saying nothing going to come near you. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. It won't come near the congregation, Tanya. Right. Yeah. It can't get in the door, David. All right. You know why? Because that same hand that was around Job is around us. Amen. Amen. Because y'all hey. upright men and women who hate evil. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Lord. Come on, somebody. Act like you're in the room with me tonight. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Ooh. 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 It's right here. It said they ain't going to come near y'all. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. Yeah. It said the wrath. He said that there be no wrath anymore mm -hmm. upon the children of Israel. So he's talking to us. Come on. He's he's talking to us. Us. Thank Thank you, verse 6. Thank you, and I behold, I have taken your brethren, the Levites, from among the children of Israel. Watch this. To you that are given as a sacrifice for the Lord to do service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Mm -hmm. Therefore, thou and thy sons with thee keep your priest office for everything of the altar is within the veil, and ye shall serve. I have given your priest office unto you, watch this, as a service of gift. Now watch this. Your act of service is a gift from God. Hmm. Your service Amen. is right. a gift from right. God to God right. and the people of God. That's right. I have given the priest's office unto you a service of a gift. And the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. I know that's hard just saying you leave stuff alone, you gotta be missing that. The Lord spake unto Aaron, Behold, I also give, I also have given thee the charge of my heaven, I mean my heaven office, of all the hollow things of the children of Israel unto thee have I given them. By reason of the anointing, by reason of anointing, me because they are, I have anointed them for it. Right. And to thy sons by ordinance forever. You, you've been anointed to do something. Mm. You've been anointed to do it. Before you was in your mama's womb, God ordained you to do something. Praise so. God. And so we come back to the sanctuary. Because we understand the significance of the change sanctuary. When I come back, I'm coming back ready. Amen. Right. I'm coming back ready. I'm coming back ready. God is talking to me. So when I come back, I'm coming back ready. I'm not coming back the same way I left. I'm not right. coming back. The, we're not right. coming back the same as we were when we left. Right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because things have changed. Can't walk, you can't come back like everything's the same because it's not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not the same. Mm -hmm. Numbers chapter uh, 19. Please. Numbers chapter 19. Okay. He's still talking about, he's still talking about consecrating these Levites and everything over here. And I want to read verse number 20. You can read from verse 1 to 22 when you get home, but I'm just going to read verse number 20, okay? Mm -hmm. Look what it says. He said, But the man that shall be unclean and shall not purify himself, that soul shall be cut off from among the congregation. Uh -oh. mm. Wow. Are y'all praying for me right now? Yeah. I, I, I need y'all to be hearing from the Lord right now. I really do. Listen. Amen. Watch this. Why is he saying that, Sister Tanya? Because God has told me to tell us it's time for us to be preparing for what's next. Yes. And if God says I'm not preparing for it, he said, okay, well, he's just going to cut you off and just, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. since you don't want to comply, you don't really want to be a part of the body. Mm -hmm. You just want to be your own. Okay, let, let's go on and do something just to sever this. Mm -hmm. See, this 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 a hard saying right here, Jordan. This kind of hard saying that God would say, okay, now you don't want to get yourself together. I'm just gonna move you away from the Red Sea altogether because I don't need you mm -hmm. being a distraction and that attitude mm -hmm. around because of what I'm doing. Right. You don't want to consecrate yourself. You, you don't want to be holy. You just want to live whorish. Uh oh. Mm. 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 
We're talking about spiritual adultery. I'm not talking about women. I'm talking about people, period. Mm -hmm. We're going to clear that up for you. He said spiritual adultery. Mm -hmm. Spiritual adultery. You committed mm -hmm. spiritual adultery. You don't want to consecrate yourself. You don't want to be holy. Okay, you want to play with the devil. That's what you want to do. Go ahead and do that then, but, but you're not going to keep doing it here. Mm -hmm. Are y'all really praying for me for real? Yes, sir. I told you I'm going to let this Bible speak to you now. <laughs> but the man that shall be unclean and shall not purify himself, right. that soul shall be cut off from among the congregation because he had defiled my son. The sanctuary of God. Y'all. Mm. Listen. God said, I'm not going to let you keep desecrating my sanctuary. I'm not going to let you keep polluting my sanctuary. You're not going to continue to act like you want in my sanctuary. Mm -hmm. It ain't but one verse. I'm going to be finished when I'm finished. It ain't but one verse. I mean, it, it seems like a long verse, don't it? <laughs> Too long. <laughs> no. He said, because, I'm going to cut you off why he said, because you defiled my sanctuary, mm -hmm. the sanctuary of the Lord. He said, the water separation have not been sprinkled upon you. Mm -hmm. He is unclean. Mm -hmm. Why is this? Why is this? What was he saying? What is he saying? Why is this? What is he saying? What is this? He said, he said, the Holy Spirit has not filled you. Mm -hmm. Set you aside because you, you don't want to consecrate yourself. Uh. He said, so the Holy Spirit have not filled you. The, the, the Holy Spirit is still lying dormant in you. Because oh. you keep quenching the Holy Spirit. Saying, no, I want to I wanna do this. Mm. I like this and I want to do this. Mm. I know you don't forgive me for all my sin. Well, you about to, you, you about to, you're in a bad place. Mm. You might want to check your salvation mm. and you spit that out at God. This one of them verses. This is one of them verses, family. Mm -hmm. He said the water of separation has not been sprinkled upon you. Watch this here. I don't see no evidence of the fruit of the Spirit yes, sir. on you. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I don't see no evidence that you've been spending no time with God because, see, if you was, he said, I, what you do in secret, I'll bless you openly. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't see no evidence that you've been in the presence of God. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to move on, Lord. <laughs> Let's go to 1 Chronicles 22. 1 Chronicles chapter 22. Now, now, now I'm, I'm just, Sister Lane, this is why I love God. I, I love the Lord and the way He put things together. Now, notice what He just said to us in the previous verse. He said, "Listen." He said, "If you if you're not clean, I'm gonna cut you out from the congregation because you're defiling my sanctuary." Now, right after he said that to us, he come and give us this verse right here. Watch this, y'all. Watch what this verse right here says. Are we all there? Amen. Mm -hmm. Watch what it says in verse, first, first Chronicles 22, 19. He said, now set your heart mm -hmm. and your soul to seek <laughs> the Lord your God. Listen now. You just heard what he said in the previous verse, right? Yeah. He said, now that you know what I said, now I need you to go on and set your heart. Get your heart right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, I got to unbutton the right. button behind you. <laughs> I got to take one little breath. I just told you, if you unclean, I'm, gonna cut you off, I'm cutting you off. He said, now that you know that, <laughs> I need you to go get your heart right. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all, y'all yeah. dragging yeah. on me. Yeah. Look what he's saying. Mm -hmm. 
Now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I told you if you come up on me unclean, I'm cutting you off. Arise therefore and build ye the sanctuary of the Lord God and bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the holy vessels of God into the house that is to be built to the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Watch this family, watch this now. Y'all do realize that we're building a house. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't make me do it. I got so happy in my feet right like now. Y'all do know that we building a house. Amen. Right. And every one of us are stones. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Come on here. Come on here. Come on here. Somebody's been reading their Bible. I can tell. Mm -hmm. And so, watch this now. Oh, I love the Lord, man. Let me read this again for you, so you, so you get this. Because God needs you to get the visual. He needs you to get the. He needs you to get the revelation. Mm -hmm. I just told you, I can't let y'all keep coming in my house unclean, defiling my sanctuary. He said, if you do that, I'm cutting you off from the congregation. Mm -hmm. He said, so now what you need to do is, since I told you that, I need for you to go and set your heart mm -hmm. and your soul to seek the Lord. Mm -hmm. Arise therefore and build ye the sanctuary. Watch this now. Of the Lord God. Red Sea, we're still in the building stages. Mm -hmm. We're still in the building stages. Watch this now. And bring the Ark of the Covenant. Bring the Ark of the Covenant. Come on. The presence of God, the Ark of the Lord, and the holy vessels of God. Watch this now. Y'all are holy vessels. We are holy vessels of God. But we are also ox. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Amen. Because we are the temple of the Holy Ghost, we are also arcs. Wow. Okay. Amen, sir. Watch now, watch now, because you need to know this. Mm -hmm. you, you're a holy vessel of God. You're a holy vessel of God, and you are ark. You are ark. You, are, you carry the Holy Ghost. He's in you. What was in the ark, family? The presence of the presence. The presence of God. The word of God was in the ark. That's the only thing that was in there. Yeah. Which represents yeah. the Holy Ghost. Right. 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 So watch this then. So watch this then. So the Holy Ghost represents the life. And the ark itself represents the body. Because that's how you see it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Understood. You, 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 you can't see. You, can't, you don't know that's the presence of God if the ark ain't there. And the spirit, the spirit, the life of it is the word that was put in it. Because the ark by itself have no life. Mm -hmm. That's right. 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 Watch now. Mm -hmm. That's why, that's why the priest couldn't go in beyond the veil any kind of way. Mm -hmm. That's right. It wasn't about the ark. Mm -hmm. That's right. It was about in the beginning was the word. <laughs> and the word was with God and the word was God. And the right. word was made flesh and dwelt among them. Right. right. So the ark was the embodiment of God, the presence of God there. Mm -hmm. That's why they couldn't act no any kind of way. And God is saying, you can't keep acting no any kind of way. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, sir. Amen. Come on. Amen. Mm -hmm. right. Holy vessels of God in the house that is to be built to the name of the Lord. That's what this is. Mm -hmm. That's what this is. And God said, you can't, you can't, you can't come back like you was when you left. Mm -hmm. I need you to consecrate. Listen, watch this. Thank you. Well, look, I gave you a chance. I've given you time to do everything you say you didn't have time to do. Hmm. Yeah, that's right. I've, I've given you all this time. Watch this here now. That I didn't answer your prayers and gave you things you asked for, and you don't even remember you asked me for them. And I've given you this time to do everything you need. Watch this here. To get better with your husband and your wife, with your children, all this kind of, everything you asked me for, I gave you this time to work all that out, reconcile all of that. He said, but I need you to get your mind off yourself right now. Consecrate yourself. Come and talk to me about what you need to do for what's coming next. Amen. All right. Don't get comfortable because you ain't going to stay home. Don't get comfortable at home. I'm 
I'm getting ready to send you back to the workplace. I'm sending you back to yes. every place I called you yes. from. Yes, yes, Man, yes. Man, I'm not going to get no help tonight. All right, yes, sir. He said, don't you get comfortable sitting at home. He said, because I'm getting ready to send you back to all the places I called you from. I'm sending you back to the places. But you can't go back the same way you was. Yes, all right. Mm -hmm. So I need for you to be prepared for what's next. Mm -hmm. I need you to be prepared for what's next. Let's look at one more verse of scripture and we come. Are y'all listening to what God is saying? Yes, Lord, we are. He said, now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord. This is verse 19 again. I had to go back. Yes, sir. Because faith coming by. Hearing. Hearing by. The, the word, word of God. The word of God. He said, now I need you to get your heart right. I need you to set your heart and seek after God now. And arise therefore and go build the sanctuary. Of the Lord. And build the sanctuary now of the Lord God and bring the ark of the covenant. You bring the presence of Listen. You're supposed to bring the presence of God with you when you come. You're supposed to bring him with you when you come. You, you know, you, you can't do the Holy Ghost like, like the Flintstone did the cat. <laughs> <laughs> they tried to do anyway. Yeah, what well, they tried to do. They're going to try to put the cat outside, close the door, and go back in. <laughs> and some of us act like that with God. Okay, I'm going to leave God right here because I'm going to go do this right here. And I can't take God with me while I go do this right here. So I'm going to just sit you right here, God. I'll be back to get you in a minute, in the morning. Because, see, the cat was able to go back in the house the next day. He just couldn't be in there while they didn't sleep at night. Let me read this one more time because the Lord told me i got to stop right here. So I'm stopping right here. We ain't going to another verse. Listen to this verse and we're done. You got to remember... Why, yet you gotta you gotta link these two verses, the last verses we read this, you gotta link it together, John, because yeah. watch. Because he say now. Mm -hmm. right. Now what? Now that you heard what I told you in the previous verse, mm -hmm. now go do this. Y'all feeling me? Yes, yes sir. sir. Amen. Now set your heart and your soul, soul. to seek the Lord your God. Arise. Is that not what God been telling us to do? Yes, yes. yes. yes sir. Arise, therefore, Take and journey. build ye the sanctuary of the Lord God to bring the ark of the covenant. You build the house, get yourself together, and the presence of God is going to come in this house like you ain't never seen before. Amen. 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 The holy vessels of God into the house that is to be built to the name of the Lord. All of this is, is as unto the Lord. Everything we do here is as the Lord. It's, it's about making him famous. It's about making Jesus famous again in this earth. Amen. That's what it's all about. That's what we do as Red Sea. We're not here to put on no ads and to put on no shows and no concerts for nobody. We want to be some true worshipers. We want to worship God with our whole heart, soul, mind, and body. Everything within us, sir. We got to be the living sacrifices that we've been called to be. We gotta be the salt and light that we've been called to be. Amen. Father, we're grateful. We're so grateful for everything that you've said to us. Yes, Jesus. In our Bible study tonight. Grateful. 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 Father, if, if I've said something that you didn't want to say, I need you to erase it from the minds of your people. Amen. Erase it. Erase it. Now I pray for us, Father, that, that everything was said, though, fell on good ground. Yes. That we welcomed yes. the word of God. We welcomed it, and now we're hiding in our heart. So we don't sin against you. We heard what you said tonight. In the scriptures, we heard what you said. And we take it serious, what you said. And so we're going to go get our hearts right. And we're going to seek your face. Because we need to know what to do next. Yes, Lord, we need to know. We need your instruction and we need your guidance. We're going to acknowledge you in all our ways. Yes, Lord, we can't we stay where we are, Lord. Lord. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Lord. For us, we need your guidance and we need your leadership. 
You know everything that's about to transpire. You know everything that's coming on the horizon. You know what's up the street and around the corner. And we need for your word to continue to be a light lamp. Yes, Lord Jesus, we need your help. Our hearts are pliable. And we are willing. Willing vessels. We receive your word. And we're going to apply this word to our life. Yes, Father. Shortly, there are some things that are getting ready to come to pass. Before we know it, we'll all be back together again. And we pray you should advance for it. We can all come Lord. back together the way we left. Thank you, Jesus. There are standards that you're expecting us to keep. Yes, Lord. So I pray over each and every one of us that are here and those who are viewing live stream. I pray over us right now in the name of Jesus that we will honor the word of God, obey Excuse the me. word of God, and then we can expect what God said to happen, to happen in our life. We look forward, Father, to everything that's about to come to pass. And we so praise you in advance for it, Lord. Thank you. We thank you so very, very much for the life that you've given us. But now we're going to offer it back as a living sacrifice to you. And allow you to do whatever it is that you choose to do with this Red Sea Baptist Church, God House of Deliverance. We want to be living vessels for your holy and acceptable unto you, which is our reasonable service. We want to glorify and magnify you in everything that we say and do. Again, we thank you and love you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Any Jesus. questions or comments about anything that we look at? Any questions or comments? Yes, sir. No, it's funny because you say that uh, that guy giving us time that we wanted all, you know, time that we but he's also giving us money. And that's yeah. not, so he's giving you time and money to do anything and everything that, right. you, that right. you really want to do. He made plane tickets as cheap. I seen twenty dollars plane tickets. What you say? He really get on the plane. Everything. Oh yeah, yeah. Every excuse to kind of get out the way. Yeah. You know, that you want to do so he can yeah. come back. But you can't go to these say go. Yeah. Yeah. I just hope we recognize all the good that's that's really happening. I know how the negative can overshadow sometimes, but there's so much good that's been taking place. And I'm grateful. Any, any other question or comment? Okay, that being none. Reverend Stevens, you got some uh, announcements? Okay, we don't have any announcements. Okay, well, we're going we're gonna to pray together. What is it, Reverend? Okay, so we're going to all pray together, and then after, after this prayer, we're going to close. Father, we're so grateful, once again, we're so grateful for just the opportunity to be able to come out uh, in the capacity that you've given us as the church so that we can still be visible in our communities, in our world. Mm -hmm. We know that the enemy want to put the light completely out. Yes. And that was a commercial, a hotel that said that uh, their slogan was, we're going we're gonna to leave the light on for you. But our, our model is we're going to keep it on, Father. Keep it on. That means we have to be here. We're going to keep it on. We're not going to leave it on. We're going to keep the light on. And so right now, as, uh, as we're preparing to leave the sanctuary, God, I pray for those who are still yet walking in fear. Fear just can grip their hearts. But we know that you have not given us that spirit, but love, power, and a sound mind. Mm -hmm. And so we cancel out fear's mission right now. We command fear to leave right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Those of you, I hear you, Holy Spirit, those of you who, who are viewing and you know, you, you think you got the corona, but some of the devil making you believe you got it. COVID-19. We rebuke that in the name of Jesus. The devil is a liar and you don't have it. We rebuke it in the name that of Jesus. That cough is not from COVID-19. Hallelujah. That sweat, that that sweat, that that's not COVID-19. Thank you, Lord. Those symptoms you have are not from COVID-19. Mm. And so you stop listening to the enemy because that's not true. It's not true at all. You don't have COVID-19. Thank you, Lord. You got a slight case of the flu, and that's all it is, and it's a slight case. So yeah. stop listening to the yeah. devil. You don't have it, and you're not going to catch it. We claim the healing right now. And we thank you right we now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Right now. We give you glory, we give you praise. In right the name now. of Jesus. Mm -hmm. At the
person that's got your arm raised up, you moving your arm because you feel some kind of pain, something going on in your arm, in the top of part of your, your shoulder there. That's being healed right now too. You're doing that right there. I see you in the spirit doing that with your arm. Hallelujah. Got your arm over your head and you moving your arm around because you feel some that that pain right there that's going away. That catch is matter of fact, that catch coming out right now in the name of Jesus. You won't have to worry about that no more either. You wanna because you, you, you haven't been able to sleep on that side because you've been bothered by that side, that shoulder right there. You won't have to worry about it no more. You can sleep on that side and it's in not going to bother you no more in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we thank you for our Bible study time. We thank yes. you for you expounding on the word for us. And being clear, if there's anything that was unclear that your people didn't understand, you want us to get an understanding. So I pray in the name of Jesus that you will speak clearly to your people and give revelation where revelation and insight is needed. Thank you for our Red Sea Baptist Church family, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for our family. Thank you for keeping our family. Yes, Lord. And those who are watching, God, thank you for those who have committed to watching uh, via Facebook Live. Breathe on their life, Father, in the name of Jesus. Breathe on their life. Now as we depart, Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you will go before us and make our crooked places straight and rough places smooth. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, Love our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit of Almighty God. May he rest, rule, and abide. Hence, for now, forevermore, that the church of the living God can come together once again and worship you, O God, in spirit and in truth. Let the church say, Amen. 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 Cool. Okay, y'all got some prayer requests. Yeah. John, you are? Come on.